Next up, after targeting each other long distance for months, Donald Trump and Joe Biden will face off against each other in person in their first presidential debate, just a little bit of time. The real clear politics polling average shows Biden as a six-point national lead, but that's down from a 10-point lead back in June. Of course, tonight's matchup will look and feel a lot different than debates past. The candidates will be socially distanced. There'll be no handshakes or opening statements. There also won't be any commercial breaks during the 90-minute broadcast. There's only one moderator, Fox News' Chris Wallace, and he's already announced the topics for tonight. Supreme Court, the pandemic, election integrity, the economy, race and violence in our cities, which is somehow considered one topic, and, of course, the candidate's record. So... Will it all make a difference? Joined by Amber Phillips, she's political reporter and author of the great five-minute fix newsletter at the Washington Post. Amber, it's great to see you again. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. Before we get to the debate, this may be ridiculous, but I'm reading uh, uh, Trump's communication director for the campaign statement that Biden backed out of a deal to have his ear to see if he had an earpiece. Trump says he wouldn't take a drug test. This is not a prelude to Trump dropping out of this debate at the last minute, is it? I'm not hearing anything like that. Uh, earlier this afternoon, we saw the president you know, line up staff at the White House and wave them up on the South Lawn as he is the first lady <laughs> got in the helicopter and went to Cleveland. So I'd be very surprised to see the president um, put up, you know, do all of that and then not get on stage and have a debate. That being said, I what I see from the president the past couple of days and, you know, I'm in the past couple of weeks and even months is him trying to uh, argue somehow that Joe Biden like isn't good enough to debate and yet lower the president's own bar for how he should debate. You know, he's question uh, by the vice president's like mental clarity and acuity, um, but then says, oh, well, he is more experienced than I do, so he'll be better on the debate stage. So I, I wonder if this kind of like the earpiece thing and all this stuff is tied into the president trying to both simultaneously lower his own expectation uh -huh. threshold and then attack his opponent. You know, the conventional wisdom is debates almost never matter unless you make a huge mistake like uh, Gerald Ford made when he said Eastern Europe was not under Soviet domination against uh, uh, Jimmy Carter. That's generally the truth. But could this not be an exception to the rule? I see it both ways. It matters and it doesn't potentially. Uh, one reason it matters is because look at the what's happening in the world and the nation, you know, with this debate going on. Has the United States ever faced a triple threat crisis, coronavirus, the economy, race relations, and on top of that, a super contentious Supreme Court nomination battle that uh, calls into question some of the democracy representation issues here in America all at once, you know, a month or so before the election. Um, and here's this presidential debate. The stakes are high. That being said, we're yeah, seeing in poll. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I was going to say we're seeing in poll after poll that, that voters in swing states, like nine in ten, say their minds are made up. They know who they're voting for. Nothing's going to change their mind. So I could see, um, you know, we, we also seeing in polls that a lot of people want to watch this debate, but that it's more like to cheer on their candidate or to hate watch um, the guy they don't want to vote for, rather than having an open mind to maybe changing their mind. You know, I, first of all, every prediction I've ever made about a debate is wrong. So take that uh, with a, the appropriate grain of salt. It seems to me Trump is going to be Trump. And the only issue is how much does Chris Wallace have the ability to rein him in? However, the whole issue, Joe Biden at 77 is not Joe Biden at 50, 60 or even 70. Everybody is watching to see how he performs in addition to what he says. It seems to me that's the area that is ripe for a game changer. If Joe Biden is not up to 90 minutes of intense scrutiny, and I'm assuming unrelenting personal attacks from Donald Trump, no? Yeah, I think that's absolutely a possibility, especially given the president has laid the groundwork uh, to do exactly that, to call into question whether Joe Biden is up for the job. We actually saw his campaign, uh, excuse me, his White House tweeting today that, you know, the vice president wants breaks in the debate and you don't yeah. get breaks through the world leader um, saying stuff like that. Uh, I watched uh, town halls a couple weeks ago that both candidates had separate town halls in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I watch them. 
Yeah. yeah, and I'm interested to hear what you think. I What I heard from the president was an inability to answer basic questions about his record on coronavirus, uh, to acknowledge mm -hmm. their systemic racism in America. Uh, he got really defensive about all this stuff in a way that I thought made any potential stumbles from Biden in his own town hall less of a political issue. Um, what is that going to look like when they're on the stage together? I don't know. But but I, you know, when I watched the two kind of the day after the next side by side, almost it, it was like, um, you know, Trump's missteps lessened any attack he wanted to to uh, throw at the vice president. You know, Amber, we're a little short on time. Quickly, you wrote about this, and I've been talking about it a lot on the radio. Uh, uh, Joe Biden has resisted. In fact, he criticized Ed Markey for saying if they slam Coney Barrett down our throats, uh, we're going to end the filibuster, said Markey. Uh, we're going to expand the court. Your paper reported that uh, the Biden campaign was annoyed with that. Biden can continue to dance around this issue. He's got to answer tonight, does he not? What happens if one, she's confirmed, and two, if the Affordable Care Act is struck, no? Right. I, well, the issue for him, I, I think he does need to have a plan for that because Democrats are telling, you know, voters to go out there and vote, save, save your health care mm -hmm. by voting. Biden has not said what he would do and what Democrats might do yeah. if they win back power next year and the Supreme Court does strike down this Affordable Care Act. So I think that's right. He needs to talk about that. He and Kamala Harris are going to keep getting questions about court packing um, until they come out and say one way or the other that they support it or don't. And politically, they do not want to talk about that because it puts them okay, we only at have, odds with the left. We only have 15 seconds. Are you a betting woman or not? No, <laughs> especially not in politics. Well, I'm going to ask you to bet anyway. Who is Trump going to say fake news more or is Biden going to say that's a bunch of malarkey more? Who wins that one? Oh, gosh. Well, Biden has said he doesn't want to fact check the president. He wants to leave that up to viewers to figure that out. So I vote Trump. Great. I'll check back with you. Amber Phillips, thanks so much. Your work is great Thank in you. The Washington Post. Thanks.